Hello brothers and sisters and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all having a good week. Let's talk about some music. Now in a lot of ways, this video was a long time coming for me. I've been following Uncle Adam's career kind of from a distance for a couple years now. Mainly I just think his story is incredibly fascinating. He's a very interesting case study of all the economic and psychological pitfalls that come with being an aspiring rap artist. And not only does he serve as a cautionary tale for how not to go about building your rap career, but I've realized recently that he is also representative of, the mo of some of the most damaging side effects of a particularly dangerous false teaching that has been permeating the Christian community for many years now. But before we talk about that, let's give a quick recap on Uncle Adam's career as a whole to see how we got here. Curtis, or Uncle Adams, started as a battle rapper from a very young age. He quit that and stopped making music altogether for a few years, before returning as a self-proclaimed motivational rapper and motivational speaker. Unc would go on to make the songs I Am Stronger and Put the Keys Down, songs about bullying and drunk driving, respectively. These songs would give him quite a bit of attention, and before he knew it, Unc was getting covered by news stations and doing shows and speaking engagements at local school districts. But the uncontrollable narcissism that would go on to characterize Uncle Adam's career later on began to show early warning signs as he would cancel shows in the Regina School District after they asked him to change some, some lyrics in his songs to some more friendly or family friendly. But by far his biggest song to date is the song Original that really blew up after YouTube music critic Anthony Fantano of the Needle Drop channel made a very comical reaction to it where he basically clowned the song for nearly a half an hour. Uncle Adams was already a bit of a meme by this point, but being clowned by one of the biggest music reviewers on YouTube really sealed Unk's status as just a meme rapper. But instead of leaning into the more goofy and comical elements of his persona and using the large influx of new listeners to his advantage, Adams just dug his feet in and antagonized Anthony Fantano and alienated a pretty large chunk of his fan base, calling the people who were listening to his music, ironically or for laughs, trolls. The problem with that though is that I don't know anybody on the internet who enjoys Unk's music unironically, and Uncle Adams completely lacks the self-awareness and the humility to realize that the only reason why anybody is listening to him at all is because he is a meme now. I don't want to be too harsh on the guy, but Unk's self-perceived artistic value is blown way out of proportion. Despite paying huge sums of money for a professional studio and engineer's production value is incredibly low. He uses royalty-free instrumentals that sound royalty-free, his lyrics are usually poorly written and extremely surface level, his voice is also way too goofy sounding to really ever be taken seriously, and throughout the many years now that he spent trying to make it, aside from a couple tracks here and there, Unk has shown no signs of any meaningful artistic progression. And this is likely due in no small part with the fact that Uncle Adam's motivations to make music have very little to do with artistry at all. And this brings us to the At Least A Million Mission, a series of vlogs that Uncle Adams has produced, where he reveals that he has quit his job, sold his house, and gone over $164,000 in debt in pursuit of his goal, which is, take a wild guess, to make at least a million dollars, as well as gain at least a million monthly Spotify listeners. And when I said Unk's motivations had little, if anything, to do with artistic expression, I meant that in the most literal sense. But it's here where we start to get into the theological waters of Uncle Adams, because when re-watching Uncle Adams' first installment of the At Least A Million Viewed It video series, I was confronted with an incredibly familiar concept, which if you're also a Christian, you've probably heard this as well. You can do what you think you can do. And I think 
that I can be a superstar, world famous rapper. And since I think that, since I believe that, it will become a reality for me. What Uncle Adams is describing here is basically almost verbatim the law of attraction. This idea that if you focus on negativity in your life, then more negative things will follow. But if you focus on positive thinking and positive energy, then that will cause more positivity to enter your life. And if you want something in life, then all you have to do is believe that you will get it and basically positively affirm your own desires and it will come to you. This as far as I could tell a secular philosophy, but some biblical teachers have made it a core pillar of their faith. Law of Attraction theology has been taught most notably by Joel Osteen and Andrew Womack two of the most notorious false teachers in the church today. These men insert Christian language into the Law of Attraction philosophy by teaching that if you believe the Lord is going to bless you, then he will. And if you believe the Lord will heal your pains or sickness, then he will. And if you believe that the Lord will give you success in your career, no matter what it is, then he will. And the onus is on the believer in this case to simply have enough faith for the Lord to bless them. The teaching is more commonly referred to among the body of Christ as the prosperity gospel. The prosperity gospel is an incredibly dangerous false teaching for several reasons. Reason number one is that it reduces God to nothing more than as a genie in a bottle that we can just go to whenever we want something. It discourages a true spiritual relationship with Jesus and as we see in the case of Uncle Adams, creates a sense of entitlement that the Lord owes us health and success. We should always pray for healing for ourselves and our loved ones who are sick and in pain and we should also pray for success and for financial provision from God if, we, if that's what we need. I'm not saying don't pray about these things, but the danger comes when we start to command God to give us these things, or if we start to act like God owes us these things. God will only heal people or bless people when it is in his will to do so. The second reason why this teaching is so incredibly harmful is that when it is not in God's will to answer our prayers for healing or blessings, it places the blame squarely on the believer for not having enough faith. And this has two adverse effects. Number one, it can cause a believer to question their own faith and it opens up the door for guilt and shame to stifle their spiritual growth. And the second thing is that it could create frustration and disillusionment for the believer towards God for not answering their prayers. Either one of these things can cause an otherwise faithful believer to fall away from their faith. And the third reason why this teaching is so dangerous is exactly what has happened to Uncle Adams over the years. Adams believes that because he believes in his dreams, he is going to get it no matter what. And because of the expectation that he has for success under the law of attraction, he is willing to plunge himself into crippling financial debt now in order to achieve that success because he knows, or at least he believes, that the harvest will outweigh the debt that he's incurring in the long run. This is what is referred to in the prosperity gospel movement as sowing seeds. Men like Kenneth Copeland and Mike Murdoch will encourage you to sow a seed of faith into their ministries through a monetary donation with the promise that the Lord will bless you in greater abundance according to what you have given. Basically, whatever you give, God will give back in larger amounts. Now, I want to say before I continue that I am not saying that you shouldn't donate to church ministries, but donate money to your local church. Donate money to uh, mission trips that or causes that you believe in, but don't give money to these prosperity teachers on television who already have an absurd amount of wealth. But if a believer falls for this trick, they will be willing to part with a shockingly large sum of money with the expectation that it will be returned to them in a greater amount than before. There have been, unfortunately, many well-documented cases of people putting themselves into financial ruin for this dark ministry, because in the words of Mike Murdoch, that's what makes it faith.
I do not know if Uncle Adams believes in God or not. From what I have seen, he has never talked about it in any of his videos or in his music. But if I had to guess, I would say I could say with relative confidence that he subscribes to the universal law of attraction rather than the Christianese law of attraction. But I do believe Uncle Adams is a perfect representation of all the damage that prosperity gospel theology and seed sowing ministries can do to a believer. Because what Unk perceives as attracting positive outcomes into his life through having a positive attitude, the reality is that he's just driving himself farther and farther away from his goals. And what Christians may perceive as having faith in the Lord to bless them and heal them or to return their seeds of, si uh, of faith, what they're doing in reality is just drifting further and further away from God because it's a transactional faith at that point. It's not a spiritual relationship. While Uncle Adams believes that he is investing in himself and his career, really all he's doing is ruining his life and piling on crippling debt upon himself with the expectation that one day his success might be enough to outweigh the costs. Much in the same way that an impoverished Christian would be willing to part with money that they cannot afford in the hopes that the Lord will reward their faith. The truth is that in both cases, you're investing towards an outcome that you have little to no reason to expect. The music industry and the seed sowing ministries are incredibly similar in the sense that both are per perfectly willing to take every last penny out of your pocket by providing promises of riches and fortunes that they know that they can't keep. And while they would have you believe that you're sowing a seed in faith, really all you're doing is buying Jesse Duplantis' fourth private jet. I don't want people to think that I made this video just to ridicule or make fun of Uncle Adams because I actually don't dislike the guy. I honestly feel bad for him, I mean, I think he was really just sold a bill of goods by some music industry snakes, and Adams was just too drunk off of his own Kool-Aid to know any better. Not like how Christians get sold a bill of goods by guys like Creflo Dollar or Benny Hinn who prey off of broken individuals who are too desperate for a miracle in their life to exercise any discernment. Uncle Adams can serve as a cautionary tale, not just for aspiring rap artists who want to build a successful career, but also for Bible-believing Christians to stay as far away from the prosperity gospel movement as possible. And if you have been deceived by the false prosperity gospel, then I urge you to turn away from their teachings right now and seek the true gospel as it is written in scripture. Otherwise, you run the risk of finding yourself in a position not unlike Uncle Adams finds himself today. And that's all I have for today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked this video. Please feel free to like and subscribe to the channel. Those would both help me out a great deal and I'd be very appreciative. And as always, have a blessed week and we will see you in the next video. I'm still working on that outro.